Hi, and welcome to Lost Genre Malicious Compliance, where getting a free ride isn't exactly what they expect. In 2018, I lived in Southern California while I was finishing up graduate school. Uber was more popular than ever and given how spread out California is in general, was an easy side hustle to shuttle people back and forth. However, I only did it for a while because I'm not really the most patient person and eventually got tired of people's BS's and attitudes. One of the most common tactics for customers looking to screw a driver was to cancel their rides in the middle of the trip to avoid paying the fare. They would often say how they did it accidentally and then ask me if I could just finish the trip since we were basically there anyway. This happened to me three times. The first two times I pulled over and told them to get out of my car, to which they complied, albeit they called me several names and threatened to kill me. The third time is the subject of this post. It was about 4.30 in the afternoon on a Tuesday when I decided to log on and catch some fares. Most people go into the office on Tuesday and Thursdays and are looking to get rides home between 4 and 5 p.m. to beat the traffic. At this point, I should mention that I was living in San Diego. If you know the area, you'd know that many people work in the city and live in the outer areas, Chula Vista, Imperial Beach, Escondido, Pacific Beach, because it's cheaper. The day of the event, oh yes, it was an event, I picked up a middle-aged girl who was a student at the local community college downtown. Although she was in community college, I could tell she had money by the way she dressed and where she was going, La Jolla. She gets in my car and starts to make conversation with me. I'm driving through town and as I am about to get on the highway, I hear the cancellation ding. I pull over to a parking lot and let her know that she cancelled the ride and I could not drive her until she rebooked it. She gave me the it was an accident excuse. I told her not a problem and to just rebook the route. Well at this point all those people I told you about earlier had just got off work and we were in what I call the power hour of maximum surge pricing. La Jolla is like 25-40 minutes away from downtown San Diego depending on traffic. I looked and the trip would have cost her $70. She told me that she wasn't going to pay that. I said fine and asked that she exit my vehicle. She refused and told me to take her home like I was her chauffeur. At this point I was pissed and wouldn't have done it even if she gave me $100 cash. I didn't really need the money. I asked her politely again. She refused. I had never really gotten to this point before. The other two people were guys and would have had no qualms about yanking their butts out by force and beating them in the middle of the highway. However, that wouldn't have been a good look in this situation. I thought about going to the police given we were three blocks from the headquarters, but I wanted her to feel the burn. Cue malicious compliance. I asked her if she wanted a free ride. She suddenly perked up and said, I knew you'd come around, you're such a nice guy. I said buckle up and we got on Interstate 5. Here is the part where I tell you that San Diego is 16 miles away from the Mexican border. I also keep my passport in my glove compartment because I did volunteer work in Rosarito every so often. We were about 4 minutes into the ride when she asked where we were going. I turned around and told her I'm going to Tijuana and I'm glad you can join me. I hope you brought your passport. At first, she didn't think I was serious, but by exit 4, she started to panic. I told her she was welcome to get out at any time, but she needed to make a decision soon, because after we passed exit 1, there was no turning back. I also told her that I wasn't taking her back. Well, she got the message and pleaded for me to pull over. I pulled over and dropped her off at the outlet mall in San Isidro, at the border. Just for fun, I checked the Uber rate from the mall to La Jolla and the cheapest rate was $87 for a pool ride. I didn't make any money that night, but that was the richest experience I had while being a rideshare driver. I stopped about one month later and sold my car. I wasn't going to kidnap this chick. I communicated with both Uber support and a few of my friends to let them know she would not get out of my car after being asked repeatedly prior to driving towards the border. I covered my bases. Well, she wanted a free ride, but
but I guess she just wasn't going where she wanted to. That's a good burn. Alright, let's continue to the next post. I used to work part-time at a sandwich shop during college, about 9-10 years ago. The shop had a high turnover rate and I was there the longest, so I basically learned everything in the store. One day, we had a health inspector come in to evaluate the food safety, temperature readings, food storage, etc. I had to slice the tomatoes for night shift and the inspector took issue with the dirty slicer and asked if I had cleaned it first. I said yes. He asked if I used the scrubby thingy, I forget what it's called, it's like that wired scrub on a stick. I said no, you don't put your fingers near the blades, you just spray it off and dunk it in sanitizer. He chastised me, so I was like okay, show me how to clean it properly then. If there was a way to do it right without getting hurt, then I was willing to learn. My coworker and I stood there and watched him jam the wire scrub between the blades and pull it back. And of course it got stuck. He shoved it forward again, jamming his knuckles into the blades, he started bleeding everywhere. My coworker had to shut himself in the walk-in freezer, he was laughing his butt off. I just looked at my manager trying to help this idiot inspector get a towel and whatnot and said yeah I'm not cleaning the slicer like that. The slicer looked like this. Well I guess that's a lesson learned for the health inspector and now he knows why they clean it like they clean it. Ouch. Alright let's continue to the next post. So this happened last week and I'm proud of myself for it. During this pandemic I have found peace by sitting in my garden watching YouTube and scrolling Reddit. I always sit on my swing chair. A swing chair is a chair mixed with a swing so you can sit and swing without annoying chains or having to go out. My swing chair has been through a lot, so much so to the point where if you sit on it it squeaks a bit. I like the squeaks though, so I keep using it. My neighbor hates my family. Ever since my mom, my brother and I moved into my now stepdad's house. She especially hates me for some reason. One day, my parents got the day off from work, so we were all home. I was out in the swing chair listening to music using headphones. All of a sudden, a bucket gets thrown over the fence and almost hit me. I jumped and took off my headphones. I asked, who did that? My neighbor responded with, Stop swinging on your chair, you're distracting my children and making them jealous. Either stop or give it to me. I asked, how am I distracting them? She replied with, The sound makes them look through the hole they made in the fence. I said that I'll stop. Here's the malicious compliance. I stopped going on my swing chair and instead picked up an old hobby of mine, drumming. I played it so much that my family would sometimes have to speak louder to talk to me. This is where it gets weird though. She then phoned my personal phone that I have never given the number to anyone except my close friends. Apparently she had gone to my mom's Facebook, searched for a pic of me and my friends, found my best friend's number by some means and posted as my aunt asking for my number so she could check up on me. She called me yelling at me to stop drumming. I said why? And she said because of the noise. I said that she said I had to stop swinging so I took up a hobby. She hung up. I now go on my swing chair, play drums and play drums with my brother on his guitar. Revenge is best served cold. Well, creepy stocky lady, you got what you had coming. Rock on drummer dude, I hope you're having fun. Alright, let's move on to the final post. Last night, I bought a package of donuts for my family. There's five of us to share. This morning, there was a half of a donut, along with several whole donuts, left from my daughter taking a half and leaving the other. I took the half since nobody had eaten it and had a wonderful snack. A little while later, my daughter comes in upset that someone had eaten her half of a donut. She's 16, I don't know, she gets upset by a lot of things. I said I ate it and she got mad and said that was mine, I was saving it, etc. 
I explained that if you take half of a donut and leave the other half in the family slash community pack, that half is free game. If you want the other half, set it aside. My wife took my daughter's side, my younger two agreed with me. We ended up by agreeing that if someone leaves a half of a donut in the pack, nobody should take it except the person that left it there. Exact wording. Fast forward a couple of hours and I'm standing in the kitchen and see that exactly half of the donuts are gone, which gives me an idea. I wash my hands, take out every donut, cut them in half, and fill the pack with the newly halved treats along with a note. Some men just want to watch the world burn. My daughter came in the kitchen and started saying, ha ha, very funny, and reached for a donut. I jokingly smacked her hand away and said, sorry kid, those are my donuts. Those are the rules. Her eyes went wide. She was speechless. My wife thought it was hilarious and said, I win. I let my daughter have her donut anyway. Well, he did win. They were all his half donuts. And those were the rules. So yeah, those are his treats. All right. Well, I hope you guys liked this video. I thought it was quite fun. This is a really cool sub. So if you did like it, go ahead and click that like button and I'll see you guys on the next video.